you have to have faith. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to have faith in the people around you. You know, faith to overcome obstacles and be successful. And you also have to be determined. Nothing is handed to you in this world. You have to work for it. You have to make sacrifices. You're listening to Change Your POV Podcast, Episode 10. Welcome to Change Your POV Podcast, helping you navigate transitions in your life like entering and exiting college or the military, changing jobs or careers, and providing you with the coaching and mentorship needed to help you advance in your personal or professional life. Sometimes all you need is to change your point of view. Now, here's your host, Eddie Lazary. Today I've got Michael Lumling on the phone, and um, very interesting guy. He's got a lot of experience with our audience, uh, veterans, veteran entrepreneurs, those that are transitioning out of the military. So without further delay, Michael, why don't you talk to uh, our audience about who you are and, and um, kind of your story and your background? Well, I was uh, I was born at uh, Fort Benning, Georgia in uh, 1978, so I was an Army brat. So I started out the gate coming from a military background. Uh, my father and grandfather were in the military. So um, being a part of the military was kind of engraved for me from the time that I was born. Uh, traveled around when I was about, so I was about six. Uh, so I ended up in Pittsburgh where both my parents were from. And that's where I was kind of raised. So that's kind of where I got most of my roots from in that area. And then upon leaving high school, uh, I wanted to try college and uh, something that I thought would be a good idea as an 18 year old. Um, didn't really give much thought to the military. Um, even though my dad was in the military, I'd seen a lot of things. And uh, my dad was in the USS Kitty Hawk during Vietnam in the Navy because he was in the Army and Navy. So I just kind of started college and, you know, really wasn't kind of working out for me. I didn't have a lot of support channels. And uh, I started to, you know, develop some of the ideas uh, that I have now um, to give back and help others through those uh, lack of having someone who would be there to support you and help you and see you through. Um, so those are some of the things that kind of guided me. So I decided to join the military in 1997. And when I did that, um, I was like at a, a point in your life, you know, as a young adult and, and you want to find out who you are and what you are and, and where you're going in life. And what you're going to become. And all those questions were answered for me um, when I was in the military. So uh, I served the United States Army for four years. I was a sergeant in the Army. A very successful military career. Very proud of the service uh, to our country that I was able to provide. I uh, lived overseas. I was in Germany uh, for three and a half years. I was also deployed as part of K-4 in 2000. Made sergeant in uh, three years, um, worked extremely hard, learned a lot, and um, really got my first um, introduction to the business world and became a, a man. So those are things that are invaluable as a young adult and things that transferable skills that I can help in, in my long-term uh, vision and helping others uh, move forward in their lives uh, and overcome adversity. So after the military, got out of the military, uh, college, you know, even though I had the GI Bill and the post 9-11 GI Bill, I really wasn't really wasn't a pathway that I thought for myself. I, quite frankly, I was I was very scared to go back to college. I had failed. You know, I withdrew and then I joined the army. I didn't think it was something that, you know, would work for me. And at that time, I didn't have a lot of mentors. So when I got out of the military, when I started my transition, I came back to my home of record in Pittsburgh. And it was kind of like, I had gained some business experience and I came back and it, it was completely alone. So it was a very uh, difficult time. You know, you kind of want to start off in the civilian world and go in your career path. I was 21 or 22 at the time. I had served my country for four years and um, I thought, well, I guess I work for the government. So I started a career with the government that lasted uh, over 13 years. I was an investigator for the Department of Labor. I worked for the Department of Veterans Affairs. I worked for the post office. Um, I had worked, you know, other side jobs. And something interesting happened to me that led me to this point in my life right now. And that was in 2010, I moved to Richmond, Virginia for my job with the Department of Labor. 
um, from Pittsburgh. And I met another veteran, and his name's Alan Allison. And when I met him, he really changed my life because he was someone in my life who was a veteran. He worked for the government. He had a, a long career in the private and uh, public sector. He said, hey, Michael, you know, you need to use your GI Bill and go back to college. And this was nine years after I had gotten out of the military. So for me, I wasn't thinking about going back to college. I wasn't thinking about using my GI Bill. I wasn't I, I never had those thoughts. I just I never thought about them. I didn't think there was something that was even possible for me. But he stuck with me. And the result was that I started a, a, a five year journey that ended up um, graduating with three degrees, also uh, graduating through an entrepreneur boot camp for veterans program through Florida State on top of my master's from Penn State and really helped me shape the man that I am today from meeting another veteran. Um, during my business degree, I formulated a plan for my company, Power of One, and the whole concept is to help others not have to wait nine years to go back to college um, or overcome adversity or you know be afraid to talk to someone. Um, when you transition in your life and, and changes occur in your life, you always want to feel like you have someone in your corner. So I started writing um, self-help books, and I published my first one, Turning the Page, a self-help book helping people who've been abused uh, recover. I'm also a survivor of abuse uh, from my father as a child. Um, growing up in a military family, um, it was a very different back in the 70s and 80s, and I'm sure for a lot of other veterans who, who their parents were in the military, I'm sure they can relate. And it's a, It was a different mindset. Um, things were a lot stricter, you know, things were not taken as easily. And, uh, you know, I, I was one of the people that happened to take the brunt of that in a negative way. So I wanted to help people overcome abuse. Um, and I wrote my second book. Um, it's called uh, Heart to Heart with God. And it's a 180 day uh, devotional helping people with journaling uh, and increasing their relationship with God. And I just finished my newest book, which I'm very proud of, and called Bridging the Gap for Veterans from Soldier to the Civilian, A Roadmap to Success. And I set out to write this book because when I transitioned from the military, like I mentioned previously, I didn't have someone there who, you know, so to speak, hold my hand and, and help me. And this book is, is a roadmap. It's a guide. It's going to help every transitioning veteran in America, whether they served overseas, domestically, come back home and feel like, you know what, there's options that I have, there's resources, but there's also people, there's veterans who understand me and who want to help me. You mentioned the valuable relationship that you obtained with Alan, who became your, your mentor. And that's very interesting because a lot of veterans that I speak with when they get out, you know, they're very uh, independent. They're very, um, you know, the wind at their back, so to speak, and, you know, very determined. I've got this, you know, I can succeed. I, I you know, I've got, you know, I could do, do it on my own. Um, and I was the same way, right. When I, when I first got out, I mean, I had mentors and, and people that, that, um, that I kind of worked with while I was in the military, but I thought that was just kind of a, a like a military centric type of thing. And I didn't consider taking that, that dynamic outside of the military with me until, you know, much later and through trial and error and a lot of failure, um, I realized how valuable um, having that mentor outside the military was for me. So um, given that, what would you say or recommend to those that are, you know, looking to separate from the military or have recently separated uh, in terms of obtaining a mentor? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the first thing is when I... And that's the part of my book that we can reference here. My book is broken down into two phases. Uh, phase one is expiration of time and service from the military. And that's basically pre-ETS, before you get out of the military. And then phase two is personal and professional growth as a civilian. So before you leave the military is when you really have to strategize and come up with an action plan about how you're going to get your personal affairs in order, how you're going to get your documentation, how are you going to network, how are you going to create connections, how are you going to ensure when you go back to your home of record or if you stay locally, you're going to succeed. So before you leave the military starts the planning of who you're going to meet and how you're going to meet. The rest of it is kind of putting yourself out there. 
you know, you have to take the risk. Um, when I got out of the military, I thought, you know, I was high speed, low drag. You know, nobody could tell me anything. I thought I knew everything. I didn't need any help. You know, highly successful, highly, um, you know, distinguished veteran. I just thought I could do it on my own. And that's the mentality um, coming from a combat MOS. Um, you know, you think that you could do it on your own and, you know, you have a teamwork, you have esprit de corps, but at the end of the day, you still have to watch out to make sure that yourself is protected. But it goes beyond that. You have to expand your mind. You have to understand psychologically that there's, there's, there's a network out here of people that you have to tap into that can really help you. Every person that you meet on a daily basis is someone that could impact your life. It might not be today. It could be six months from now. It could be a year from now. But every person you meet can help you. And that's one of the visions for my company, Power of One, is really expanding a network of people that are not taking a lot of time, but they're truly invested into people and helping them, and especially veterans. You know, when veterans come back home, you know, sometimes, you know, people are from a lot of low income families. I came from a low income family. I come back, I didn't have a lot of support. So when you come back home, if you prepare before you leave the military and you set up yourself in a way when you come out, then you're kind of like, okay, you know, I gotta I gotta start here. I might not be running, I might not be sprinting, but I'm jogging. I got a little bit of a pep in my step. I know that I'm on the right path versus stepping out of the military day one, you hang up your BDUs and then boom, you're there and it's like a culture shock and you don't know what you're gonna do. Phase two of the book, personal and professional growth as a civilian, is perfecting the work that you did before you got out of the military. Yeah, during the military, every day you had a routine. You woke up, you went to bed, you woke up, went to bed, did PT. Everything's very strict. You, you have PT, you have your you know wake up calls, you have formation, you have to do all these things every day. You're being deployed, you're coming back home from deployments. So it's a constant on the go, on the go. When you come back, that structure is gone. So if you're not prepared for that structure, then you're going to have some difficulties. And that's what I want to help veterans do. I want to help them avoid having those initial uh, difficulties and then also having somebody in your local community, such as the American Legion or the VFW or veteran groups or connecting with a, a, a maybe a veteran who lives in the in the area that you're coming back to or staying in that you can talk to and connect with and connecting with services with the VA hospital if you need um, any specialized medical uh, treatment. So all these things, they're all important. You can't just say, oh, I need one mentor and I'm, all my problems are going to be solved. As a veteran, we need TLC, tender loving care. It's the, the feelings part of being the human being that is a military. You're you know standing tall and looking good. You're very strong. You're high speed, low drag. Nobody can break you down. You're, you're unbreakable. And that's true to an extent, but we all need each other. And that's where I want to tap into people is that, hey, there's people out who care about you and you know we want to help you. If, if you see a veteran who, who needs a resource or needs help and you say, hey, you know what? This is where you go. At that point, it's it's they have to have that personal decision that they want to help themselves. And that's where it begins with your own personal decision that, hey, I'm out here. There's people who care about me. There's other veterans such as yourself, myself, thousands of veterans across the country who really want to help you and be there for you. So that's how we have to connect with each other. Yeah. And I'm going to read a section from your book, Bridging the Gap for Veterans from Soldier to Civilian, A Roadmap to Success. And it says, the civilian life you return to will not be the civilian life you knew before you entered the military. The outside world has changed and so have you. You are about to become a veteran, an American hero who served your country and deserves respect and support. Many organizations and veterans groups will be there to help you, but you first need to help yourself. And that just goes uh, right along with what you're saying. And part of helping yourself is one, realizing that you, you can't do it alone. I mean, you might think you can, you might even want to, but um, your your level of success is really dependent upon your your ability and willingness to ask for help and you know get information in places that um, it's available. I mean, there's so many different networking groups out there. You've mentioned some of them, the VFW, the American Legion. I mean, there's uh, Facebook groups out there, um, and they niche down all the way to you know to specific units that you may have served with all the way up to entire divisions to, I mean, uh, the, the list goes on and on. As a matter of fact, I found you on LinkedIn and, um, and I'm a very, I'm a huge proponent of networking and LinkedIn is one of my number one tools for doing so. And I came across you and I saw 
you know, your name and, and I saw kind of your description. It says author, associate director, United States veteran and Spartan. And I was like, I got, I got to get to know this guy because, you know, I, I, uh, connect with you on, on more than one, uh, bullet point there. Um, so I'm also a Spartan. I, uh, I'm a new Spartan. I've raced, uh, two this year. I did my first race in Killington, Vermont, and then I did the, um, Fenway sprint down in, uh, Boston this year as well. And I ran them with my, uh, my daughter and a group of buddies, uh, that I work with at various jobs. So, um, talk to me briefly about kind of Spartan, that experience and kind of, um, um why do you run, Sp- why do you run Spartan races and what do you get out of it? It's actually a great, uh, great question again. Um, as a, I'm also a disabled veteran. I didn't explain that I'm 60% disabled and, um, I really struggled with, um, I had a couple of traumatic brain injuries when I served in the army and, um, had a missile that fell on my head. So I have a lot of headaches and, you know, a lot of things that bother me, you know, with the pain in my neck and, and, you know, different things like that, that I deal with, um, not getting too deep into, to it. But for a while there, you know, I just, you just, you just want to lay in bed all day. You don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like um, getting involved. Um, and I didn't learn about Spartan until this last year. Um, I had done some, you know, light stuff at the gym. I've always been an athlete. I've never been someone who um, is a gym rat, so to speak. So, but I realized, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, I got to start doing something here to, to keep myself in shape or, you know, with my disabilities, I'm going to start falling apart. And, um, I start. I joined a, a gym that's like a newer, uh, uh, more health and well-being type of gym, and they have a lot of classes, and it's really changed my life um, since I started there. Um, it's kind of like this community and networking that I was talking about and connecting with people. It's kind of like a, a group of people that every morning, you know, at five o'clock, the gym opens, there's people there and, you know, and I've been from the military, I'm used to being up at oh dark hundred. So I'm always in the mil- you know, always up early anyway, you know, it's just like drilled into me. So, you know, you get up at five o'clock in the morning, what do you do at five o'clock in the morning? Well, you write, you work out, you know, you try to do productive things, but If you don't have those outlets or hobbies, then it's kind of like, wow, what am I going to do? It's five o'clock in the morning, sit around, watch TV or whatever. So those aren't good things. So really, you know, having a hobby and and being able to stay physically fit are two things that really help veterans. So for me, you know, starting to go to the gym, which something that I normally didn't do because I was used to, you know, playing football, basketball, baseball, really, you know, contact athletic sports, um, you know, really those fun elements of, you know, being a part of a team, you know, really is something that, you know, at the gym, it's kind of individual, but it doesn't have to be. So I found out about Spartan um, this past year, and I just, it changed my life. It actually started with a Tough Mudder, uh, a group, someone I worked with, uh, she had these Spartan and Tough Mudder decals on her car, and I was talking to her, and her husband had done them, and you know, they were really big into it and they invited me into this group. It's called Mud Freaks and there's a lot of veterans in there. Um, and so I was like, wow, you know, it's like 60 people. So we showed up for uh, a tough mudder in uh, this past June in Virginia and there's like 50 or 60 of us. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Why didn't they have this in my 20s? So I did the tough mudder and, you know, being in the military, I'm very, you know, determined and I I'm, I love being having a challenge and I was like, wow, this is great. But Tough Mudder for me, you know, I was like, this is this is one great avenue, but I'd like to take it up a notch. And that's when I, you know, really found out about Spartan. And I just, oh, Spartan is amazing. It's like, it's so exhilarating um, when you cross the finish line, when you, when you complete an obstacle, when you're in the arena of challenging and pushing yourself. I mean, it just is so connected with my military background, you know, being uh, infantry that, I was a uh, air defense artillery and uh, it just, wow, it just, it's just so uplifting. And so I did this past year, I did one beast um, in South Carolina. I completed the trifecta. I did a super and two sprints and you know, it's hard. It's a lot of wear and tear on your body as a veteran. It's not easy, um, but it's so uplifting. And another element is that they have groups out there such as operation enduring warriors who I recently uh, started connecting with and and registered as an ambassador, and I'm going to start helping other veterans. But besides myself, Spartan and these races have really changed uh, some veterans' lives 
you know, not only me, but other people, um, people who may have had a, a ID or might have been in an um, accident in the military and, and they can go out there. They're in a wheelchair and they have a team of people who are helping them get through the course. You know, I was running uh, down to South Carolina and there, there's eight people pulling someone in a wheelchair. And it was just like, wow, this is this is unbelievable. This is amazing. So in 2016, hopefully I'll be one of those people helping a disabled vet uh, create uh, a new adventure in their life and, and maybe um, feel uplifted themselves and, and help them feel accomplished. Because the thing about being a veteran or a disabled veteran is that your life is not over because you have a disability or you have a, a, a something occur in your life. Your life is just beginning. You just have to adapt. You have to overcome. You have to face your fears. You have to just really say, hey, you know what? This happened, but I can do amazing things. I just met a veteran last week who is in a wheelchair, and he's he own, he started this company about giving um, bicycles to people. Um, he has this veteran uh, retreat at his house for disabled veterans. I mean, he's doing all this amazing things, and he's in a wheelchair. I don't know his specific injuries or anything, but it's like, wow, you know, this person is – he's motivating me, and I'm trying to inspire people and help them overcome. Just being around someone like that is so powerful. Yeah, and when I was there for the uh, – when I ran my um, sprint race in um, Fenway – I ran it on Sunday, but I volunteered all day Saturday. So I was posted at one of the obstacles all day from like 5 in the morning till 8 p.m. at night. And just to see the types of people run through there and the the, the veterans uh, community was just amazing. There was one group, um, they were called uh, Oscar Mike, in, phonetically in the military, that stands for On the Move. And it was a group of uh, look like uh, veterans and veterans families and veterans supporters, and there was several uh, disabled veterans all the way down to you know about you know double above the knee amp- amputation um, guy came through there and he you know and we weren't running outside on flat ground you know this was inside a a, a, a ballpark <laughs> where where the bulk of the obstacles is stairs right up and down stairs and and just to watch that was just so motivating and it's just. It's proof that, um, you know, being disabled isn't the end of, you know, your life. It isn't the end of, um, you know, meeting new people, uh, being active, you know, uh, being encouraging. And and then the next day on Sunday, I ran, I ran the uh, race with my daughter and we actually got kind of backed up behind um, some groups of folks. It was another veterans group and um, it was a guy... Uh, again, an amputee, and there was some people that were carrying his wheelchair, but he was completing the obstacle on his on his own. And and my daughter kind of stopped, and she looked at me and says, "You know, I I look up to them. You know, I I I, you know, she's like, I thought it was tough. I was you know starting to get weary and and feel like I can't do it. But then I I look at that and you know, and it's encouraging. And that's and that's true, right? I mean. Um, people that are willing to and able to do those kinds of things and the groups that uh, offer that level of support. It's just awesome. It's a true testament to the tenacity of veterans um, all around. That's awesome. And you've already kind of mentioned it, but it's the EBV, which is the Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans. And I I first learned of this um, from a guy who I do... um, podcast episodes with who is also an alum of that uh, particular um, education he actually did the EBV up at Syracuse and he just cannot speak highly enough about um, that organization and kind of um, what services that they provide so uh, could you kind of get into what EBV is and uh, what you're able to do with that group well the entrepreneur boot camp for veterans is a educational forum for veterans who are disabled um, to start a business or own a business to help them excel. I would kind of relate it to like a a mini MBA. You're getting exposed to so many business aspects um, if you didn't have formal education or even if you did that would just really help you succeed. It's a group of veterans who are dedicated to you and helping you succeed. It's just such an amazing, amazing organization. The people there, Dr. Haney at Syracuse University, Dr. Blass at Florida State University, they're really good friends. Uh, Dr. Mike Haney started uh, Entrepreneur Boot Camp for Veterans. 
Um, Ted Lakowitz was one of the people who was uh, one of the founders who helped start EBV. Um, Dr. Blass started at Florida State, and that's where I had went to Florida State in 2013. So the the forum um, that I had got exposed to it was I was at a veteran meeting networking, and uh, the person who wrote my book, David Rabbi, he is a retired lieutenant colonel, and he was a speaker at this uh, veteran networking um, small business association. I just started, you know, starting my business. I was uh, at a veteran SBA meeting, and Boom. So hearing testimonial, you know, veteran networking, meet another veteran. Two years later, he writes the forward to my book, but he started talking about EBV and at the at the the network, the day networking event um, during his, his session. And I didn't know anything about EBV. I didn't hear about it. Nobody told me about it. I didn't see any publications on it. And I was like, wow, I went home that night and I applied. And mm-hmm. so I didn't get into the first class, which was at LSU, but I got into the second class. So everything for EBV is paid for. They pay for your ticket. They pay for the materials. They pay for everything. So if you have a business idea, a business plan, you, you, are, you own your business. I mean, if you're a veteran, a veteranpreneur, as I call it in my, in my new book, you have those entrepreneurial spirit. EBV is a place to really help you take you to the next level. Um, but when I when I got down to Florida State in 2013, and I was in a class with about 20 other people, it's like it's like a big family. Like the people that I was connected with in this class, it's it's such an emotional attachment with these people. Um, I've had great relationships, still in contact with many of them. The the thing about a veteran, and really what it comes down to, is that. We all have a story. We're all people. And we're so inspirational to one another. I mean, being around veterans is just so uplifting. But there's there's other people in the world who aren't veterans. So we have to interact around them. You know, it's great being around other veterans. They're very helpful. They're very caring. But there's other people in the world. So we can't just stick within our own group. We have to expand out. And there's people out there who, you know, it's not an easy transition. It's not, it's very difficult. And organizations such as EBV, Disabled American Veterans, um, the American Legion, all these different groups that are out there, Veterans of Foreign Wars. I mean, there's so many groups out here that love veterans. And we have to love ourselves. And, you know, when we, we have that camaraderie and we work together and we see each other, it's like, wow, you know, it's so powerful. But when you get out of the military, you don't have a uniform any, on anymore. When you walk into a room, you don't know who's a veteran, who isn't. Now, somebody could have their head shaved like I do, and you think, oh, well, then maybe that person's in the military, but maybe they're not. It's just a haircut. So there's no way to really distinguish. Now, if you wear a hat or something like that, obviously, you can see that someone's a veteran. But outside of that, you don't know. But you, you have to talk to people. You have to understand people. And in and, and EBV – you got to be around a great group of people who really understand disabled veterans who are, have some of the same struggles and different points of their business. You have a whole another network that you can tap into. So any veteran who has a is, is has an idea for a business is a business owner wants to really get involved with EBV. I strongly encourage you to apply to get into the program. It's it's life changing. Um, it's it's such a wonderful outlet for people to really expand and not just have to work a nine to five, but go into business for themselves. And for the listeners out there, I'm going to put all the links to everything we're talking about, including EBV in the show notes of this episode. So um, it got you covered there. So if you're listening at the gym or in your car, you don't have to worry about trying to write all this stuff down. It'll all be available for you in the show notes. So you're a very accomplished individual, Michael, I must say, you know, you've done a lot. You've, you've kind of been there been around the block, so to speak. How do you define success? It's funny. Um, <laughs> when I started my company, Power of One, um, I, the motto for my company, just kicking around some ideas, and the motto for my company is faith plus determination equals fulfillment. But originally, I, when I was formulating my idea, I thought it was going to be faith plus determination equals success. And then, you know, I started to think about that. What's success? You know, what are what are your accomplishments? What are your the degrees you you achieve in life, the rank you achieve in the military, what does it all mean? Well, what it boils down to is it goes beyond success. You know, success is very relative. It depends on what context you're talking about success. Um, success, uh, graduating with a uh, with an associate's degree. 
Um, is, is success um, raising your children? Is success um, successfully serving your country and, and being proud of, of what you have done um, in, in the spite of extreme, uh, extraordinary circumstances? So success is very, it's something that is hard to me measure. It's not a tangible, measurable item. It just depends on that individual. So I took it a step further, and that's your fulfillment. I think that's a lot more important. What is your fulfillment in life? What internally do you see yourself? Where do you want to go? What's your vision? What is the mission for your life? What is your purpose? That's what I think that people want to really connect with. So to get to your fulfillment, your level of happiness, you have to have faith. You have to have faith in yourself. You have to have faith in the people around you, you know, faith to overcome obstacles and be successful. And you also have to be determined. Nothing is handed to you in this world. You have to work for it. You have to make sacrifices. Uh, I, I my first degree at ECPI University, my business degree, Bachelor of Science. I did two years. I got my degree in two years, and I did it with course overloads, and I went nonstop. And it was just like, wow! I made up two years of my life. I got a four-year degree in two years, but it wasn't easy. I was up to <laughs> one o'clock in the morning doing assignments. I was working full time. I I made the sacrifices. So for me, being able to do that was a success. But really. Success, like I mentioned, is just it's really important to focus yourself and see, hey, these are my goals. And when you reach a goal, one of the things I learned that's very interesting is that I used to be so goal driven that every time I accomplish a goal, I on to the next goal, on to the next goal, on to the next goal. But I learned through my education is that when you when you reach a goal, you have to stop and pause and recognize the good work you do. For example, if you're in the military, uh, say you're an officer um, and you make captain, you know, you make O3 and you're like, wow, I made captain. You know, you got to take the time out for yourself and say, hey, you know what? This is a big accomplishment. My sister, she's a uh, Melinda Bloomling. She's a captain in the Army Reserve. She's served a year in Iraq. Very proud of her. Uh, very hardworking. Uh, single mom of two boys. She's a captain. And I have a great amount of respect for her. She is someone who, you know, as a woman, obviously, you know, the military has expanded to uh, include a, a larger demographic and really include encompasses a lot more people and groups of people that it didn't previously. So these are barriers and, that veterans have taken for other veterans to really help them succeed now. So when I look at her and, and the, the great things that she's done, you know, she had, you know, she should be proud of herself. You know, every veteran should be proud of, of serving their country and, and, and take the time to say, you know what, I'm proud. I'm going to I'm going to get a shadow box. I'm going to put, you know, my medals on the wall. You know, that's something to be proud about. You shouldn't just put it in a drawer and just say, hey, you know, I did this and, and it's nothing. It is something. It means something. I served in the 1st Infantry Division. I was so proud to be in the 1st Infantry Division. All I could think of every day for the four years that I – for well, I was in the military four years, but the three and a half years that I was a part of the 1st ID was that on the beaches of Normandy, 1st ID, the bloody red one, was going to the beaches – the Germans were on the hill with the machine guns and they were mowing them down and they were going to die. And that's what I think about. And I think about, wow, you know, this is what America's about. These are, this is what being a veteran's about. People willing to die for their country, for their families. I mentioned in my book, you know, it brings me a lot of, you know, um, sadness and pain to know that, you know, a soldier dies in Iraq or Afghanistan. It's not just, you know, blase blah. They never get to see their family again. You know, it's really a tragic event, and the, we need to embrace these these veterans, the families of veterans who have lost overseas when they come back home. It's not just a check on the box. Yeah, and I really like what you said about when you, you got into the story with your with your sister and recognizing accomplishment and just, you know, taking pause in your life and just realizing that, you know, what what you've done and what you're doing is, is a good thing. And, and it reminds me, when, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I've, I've got my own business with this, you know, change your POV and, 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 you know, with power of one, you just, you want to be successful. And, and one of the ways I, I found to do that is, is I got a hold of a meetup a mastermind group and our, our first meetup, we kind of went around the table and everybody kind of talked about what they were doing and, you know, kind of what they were up to, what they wanted to get out of the group. And I, I, I after I got done going through kind of, you know, who I am and, and, and what I'm working on, what I've done thus far. And, and then at the very end, I said, you know, I, I joined this group because I'm looking for 
just brutal, brutal, um, constructive criticism, brutal criticism. And uh, one guy raised his hand and he says, he goes, you know, you've accomplished so much. It sounds like you need brutal encouragement. <laughs> and and it really hit me between the eyes because I just, you know, through pushing so hard and wanting to get better and wanting to do better and wanting to be more, I didn't stop, right? I, it's kind of cliche, right? Stop and smell roses. But I didn't stop and really start identifying all the accomplishments that I've made along the way. You know what I mean? And it's and that's just a good point that you brought up is no matter where you're going in life, no matter what you're trying to do or accomplish, you know, it's good to look in the rear of your mirror once in a while and, and acknowledge the things that you've done, you know, the successes that you've had. And of course, I asked the question about how you define success. And I've asked that of all of my guests so far. And, and amazingly, and I'm sure you're not surprised by this, but nobody has ever come back and mentioned um, the amount of money that they have in their bank account as a way to define success. Nobody has. Um, so in life, it's really not about money or how much you make. It's about the connections. It's about the contribution. It's about the people in your life. And that's really what it's about. And of course, you know, unless you're just a very unique individual, there's no way you can have success in your life without failure, which brings me to my next question. And that is, um, what's been, been your greatest failure along the way? My greatest failure um, along the way is when I got out of the military and I thought that I knew everything and became someone who was very uh, based on himself. And <laughs> for someone who really wants to help someone, I was someone that just only cared about myself and I just was locked into this funk and zone where I just thought that I was I was unbreakable. I was someone who didn't need anybody. I just felt alone. I just I just didn't want to be bothered. I just I became someone that was on the outside was very strong, but on the inside was very broken. And I had to take, you know, time to really heal myself and really understand that, hey, you know, just because you serve your country doesn't mean that, you know, that you get out and you could just walk all over people. And yeah. I just really had to come to grips with that. I really had to understand and, and grow and become, a, you know, even more of a man than I had in the military. You know, it's like you break it down to build you up. But, you know, what is built up? You know, you're a lean, mean fighting machine. You come out and, you know, there's no wars to fight. You know, there's there's no one that you have to protect, you know, outside of your family. And, and you know, psychologically, you know, the, the measures you take on a daily basis to ensure safety, um, which never go away. You know, you walk out of a building, you're you're constantly, you know, surveying the area, making sure that, you know, you don't have to do anything or react in a hostile environment. So these, some of the tendencies of being in the military never leave a veteran. You know, it stays with us forever. I pretty much am serving my country for the rest of my life, I feel like. Um, it's, it's just what it is. But mm -hmm. there's a way to take what you've learned in the military when you transition. And my book does those things. It helps you get your psychological well-being. The whole concept of power of one and my ideas is based on an authentic leadership model. And that is real life events that I've been through that I can share with other people. It's very powerful. You know, you can sit up here and, and I really appreciate you saying how the success I've achieved. But I kind of look back and, yeah, I've achieved a lot, but I want to achieve more. I want to help more people. I, I want to do more. I feel like I'm constantly working to help other people. That's my purpose. That's my goal. I want to give back to other people through real things that I've done. So in the in phase two of my book, helping people with their psychological well-being, that was something that I had to overcome the fear of going back to college. Also navigating uh, the getting your education through the GI Bill and the post 9/11 GI Bill. You know those things that when you go through your transition, you really need help with. You don't really understand. You don't know. You know some of the paperwork you have to fill out. Um, connect, creating connections through networking, really getting, um, through, like I had mentioned before, starting your network and then building on it. I was in a barber shop the other day and a young man uh, that was down by Virgi Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, uh, a young man who's a basketball player on, on the team. 
and they're pretty, uh, you know, well-known. VCU's had a lot of success recently. And I was sitting in a barbershop and I asked him, I said, hey, you know, obviously he had some VCU stuff on and I could tell he played basketball. I asked him if he was on the basketball team and he said, yeah, he was. Um, and I said, well, what are your future goals? You know? And then I said to him, I said, well, you know, have you joined LinkedIn? And he said, no. And I said, well, you know, the NBA, you know, that might be a goal of yours, but you might not get to the NBA. So you got to start your networking now. And it's the same for veterans. We need to have those conversations. We need to think about, hey, you know, we're not going to be in the military. You know, we may serve and we may retire after 20 or 25 years, but there's going to be a point when you leave the military. When you, so your transition happens to every veteran. Every veteran has to transition. Um, uh, a young lady, the other day, her um, husband retired from the military and and he had served 25 years and he had a difficult time transitioning. So this isn't just for 21 years old or 22 year old or, you know, young adults. These are mid aged adults. You know, these are colonels, these are lieutenant colonels. These are potentially generals, you know, but you know, these are enlisted unli um, officers. It, it's a whole pool. Everybody has to transition. So it doesn't matter what point in your military career that you have to exit under honorable discharge or medical discharge, whatever the case may be, there's a point where you have to transition. And if you're not prepared and you don't create these networking, that's why with the, with the boom of, of uh, social media and electronic media that it's changed your life. Like when I served from 97 to 01, there wasn't Facebook. I couldn't connect with those, a lot of those guys. I mean, there's a handful of people that I that I know that I'm connected with still today from when I served in the military. Whereas now, people who serve, you know, you're connected with everybody. I mean, everybody's connected. So this is a great opportunity to really network and really grow with each other. I mean, the the possibilities are endless. So mm -hmm. I wish they that that was around when I served. But now, you know, you just have to adapt. You have to overcome. Right now, it is what it is. And my book set outs to help veterans transition in a positive way, make the connections once they make the decision to do so. Um, let me ask you this, um, and it's going to be different for everybody as unique situations, but just in general, how much runway should somebody give themselves prior to separation? I mean, I think uh, a year out that veterans should start um, active military and uh, reservist and anyone who's serving in any capacity should give themselves a year to really lay down the foundation for what they want to accomplish and where they see themselves in the, within the next year. What are the steps they're going to take during that year period? Now, you know, if someone started at six months, I think that they would be okay. But a year, I think, would be the ideal time frame, 12 months to really set yourself up to be prepared psychologically, uh, physically, emotionally for what's to come. Um, mm -hmm. Really, you know, and like, it goes back to really connecting with other people who have gone through the transition. I mean, that's a great, you know, having somebody to talk to and relate to. That's why my book went. I want people to really share it and really give it. I mean, over the next three years, I think we're going to have over a million veterans uh, who are transitioning. I want every veteran to have a copy of my book because I want them to start as soon as they can. So they, they're prepared when they get out. They don't have the fear that we had and, and thousands and, and thousands of other veterans have had when they got to that point, when they were clearing their paperwork and they were checking the boxes and they're like, wow, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big thing. And to, I mean, and, and take your case, for example, I mean, a, a year runway is, is, I, I agree with that. That's, that should give you enough time to really start planning ahead. I mean, everybody knows when they're, you know, when their contract runs out, everybody knows their tentative PCS date, but, but don't, but don't wait until you get to that year mark. And, 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 and because you don't know what's going to happen. People end up separating from the military unexpectedly, like on a medical discharge, for example, and like, like in your case. Um, so, you know, the longer you wait, the harder it becomes. And if you're facing separation that's outside of your, let's call it your, your planned date, right? And so if you're planning on separating in a year and you've got a plan, that's great. But if something happens where you're forced to separate sooner, you, you're going to have to accelerate that plan. So I think the, the, the takeaway there is one, have a plan. And two, you know, there is no um, it, 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 it's not too late to start just whatever you are. If you can have two years left, three years left, it doesn't matter. Um, start now. And there's things you can do. People are like, well, you know, why would I go out and start looking for a job three, you know, three years away? Well, no, I'm not saying start looking for a job three years away, 
but you can get on LinkedIn and you can start building a network. And so when you are, you know, a year away or six or eight months away from separating, you know, you've got a robust network that you can, that you're, you know, keeping in contact with people um, in the area you're going to move home to and or, or working in the field where you want to, you know, get a job later on. And, and it's easy, it's an easy reach at that point. You know, now you can just reach out and say, hey, you know, we've been in, you know, communication for the last three years. I'm finally getting out in six months. I'm just curious to know if you 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 know of anything or know of anybody that might be looking for somebody that with my skill set i mean that's that's how it is these days that's how it works right and 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 i've you know people have said it before it's not it's not what you what you know it's who you know and it's really that's that's the way things are done and um so build your network now um i i highly recommend uh, getting Michael's book and taking a look at that. Um, it's a, it breaks it down very nicely, step by step. It's very strategic, easy to follow. Um, and if you got any questions, by all means, uh, both of us are available, and you could reach out to us um, via you know LinkedIn or um, through um, the links on my site, or even probably the links on Michael's site. We'll get into in a minute. Um, but if okay, let's ask this: if if you had a time machine, Michael, and you had the ability to go back into time and have a conversation with your earlier self. What would you What would you say? I would tell myself that to focus my goals in down another level. Um, I think I had I was working on my goals and I was growing, but I needed to define them. So I would say define your goals in a way that is going to help you for your long-term success. You know, sometimes in, we think things in general terms and it's not specific enough. That's one of the things about being a entrepreneur, um, wanting to start a business and be a business owner. You have to define and find your niche. Where, What is the group that you're going to help? What is the business that you're going to do? What are the lives you're going to change? Because everybody has a need and a want. So as a business owner or someone who's setting out in your in your professional world as a civilian, once you leave the military, you always have goals for yourself, you know, personally and professionally. So I would say define your goals down to a lower level that's going to help you reach your level of success and your fulfillment that much quicker. And like yourself and myself, we're both combat arms and Wes's. Uh, a lot of people that I speak with that are combat arms and Wes, they're very discouraged because they think that they're going to have a much harder time when they separate from the military because they don't have any marketable skills that they can leverage. What would you say to them? I would say that every – that's a, a good point. When you, when you have your resume in front of you and you're defining out everything you did, your transferable skills from the military start from uh, basic training. Everything that you learned in the military is transferable. You just have to find a way to take those transferable skills and connect them to the civilian world. And there's a lot of uh, movement right now with organizations to help um, educate employers so they understand, hey, this is the terminology that is used in the military, so those skills stand out more. I think that's one of the difficulties as a transitioning veteran is our skill sets aren't transferring over to a, to a resume search. My master's in human resources, so if you do a resume scan and you're looking for all these key words and you have military jargon in there, it's just going to throw it out. So mm -hmm. really, leaders in America really should help trying to uh, position ourselves to, to make – veterans aware of, the, okay, these are some strong words, leadership, teamwork, um, aspects of your resume that really highlight the, the work that you did in a professional setting that go beyond in the military. Because, you know, you think, well, I was in a, I was a 13 Bravo. So, you know, I, I went out every day, I did the stuff that I did and, and how, how, what skills do I have to give Bank of America, for example, or, you know, or a Ford Motor Company? How, how can I work for a large corporation or an organization with a skill set? Easily. You're, you have teamwork. You, you've done a lot of um, team building. You, you know how to train. You know how to develop. There's so many skills, but you have to sit down and, you know, sometimes it takes somebody showing you and helping you. You know, this isn't something that happens through osmosis. So it's a process. But, you know, the skills, you know, there's on the Internet, you can do searches now. There's so many ways to transform uh, your resume just from a military resume to a professional resume. What's your what are you reading today? What's your what's your favorite book or what are you reading right now? My favorite book. Oh, gosh. 
Oh, that's that's a that's an interesting question. I would have to say my favorite book is called The Go Giver, and in the book The Go Giver, it's kind of like The Secret. The book The Secret. These are two of my favorite books, and and the most recent one of the most recent books that I read was The American Wife, uh, Taya Cow's book, uh, the wife of uh, American sn- sniper Chris Cow, who uh, was killed in Texas. It was just a, such such a tragedy. Um, and really broke my heart. You know, a, a veteran comes back and, and does a lot to help uh, wounded veterans and, and really, you know, trying to take beyond what he did on the battlefield and bring it back home. And, and uh, you know, that was very unfortunate what occurred. But I really love reading uplifting books and books that showcase um, people who have over, overcome a lot and they've gone on to achieve great things. But in, in The Go-Giver, it's basically a story – about how giving things away for free creates a whole enterprise. And that's what it comes down to. We have to, it's not about the dollar, like you had mentioned earlier, it's not about the dollar amount you make. You know, you have to provide for your family. But when you give more than you receive, that's when your life really starts to open up. You know, you can't look at people and say, oh, well, I got a, a, a dollar sign on my mind. And that's one of the things that I would pass on to veterans who, as they meet people, when you meet people and you have the right attitude, the right approach, you're humble, and you have the right intentions, people will do anything for you. But if you're only out for yourself and you're only looking out for the, what's be- going to benefit you, most people aren't going to help you. That's why you have to give to receive. And it's it's funny you mentioned uh, The Secret because you're the second person that I've interviewed now that, that mentioned uh, that book as well. Pretty interesting. Something to that. I never heard of it before. So usually when you start hearing the same thing over and over again, it, there's something to it. So, <laughs> so uh, definitely going to check that one out also as well. So we're, we're, uh, we're closing out now. We're, I can't believe we're already a- almost at an hour. It's just been an honor and a, and a privilege uh, speaking with you today. And, and, and going back to, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and getting, being a go-getter and being, you know, uh, doing whatever it takes and talking about sacrifice – uh, you and I are are on a call at six o'clock in the morning, uh, Sunday morning, right? When everybody else is tucked away, you know, nice and nice and tight, sleeping in their beds on on Sunday. You know, we're we're up and at them. You know, we're getting on the call because uh, my mission and your mission is is to get um, a, a reach out to people in need. Because uh, the reason I started this, and I'm sure the reason a lot of the reasons why you started Power of One. Now, it isn't because you're sharing information that you already know about for yourself, but you're sharing information to those that, that don't know yet. And and I wish I had your book, you know, in 2005 when I got out. I wish I had my podcast, you know, in 2005 when I was when I was transitioning out. And those things just didn't exist then. And if they did, I didn't know about them. So so my mission and my goal in life is to promote people like you. Um, and get the word out to as many people as possible that can leverage and benefit from um, the assistance and the and the resources that are out there and available. I've got a question that I ask all of uh, the folks that come on to the show. Um, as you know, this show is called Change Your POV, which is point of view. Give us an example or a scenario of a time when you believed or thought something one way, but an event or circumstance occurred that forced you to see it from a different perspective. Uh, what was it, and and, uh, and uh, what lessons did you learn from that experience? The experience that I, I learned most from was, um, and most, well, the number one thing that I'm trying to share with, with the listeners and, and the people who read my book is that you think you're stronger than you really are. Sometimes you try to put a lot of things on your back. You, you, you put things on you, you put things on you, your day, your family, your life your job and and you just try to do it on by yourself you try to pick up your rucksack and you try to suck it up and you drive on well you can't always do that um and i think that learning to accept the limitations that you have on yourself and not push yourself as hard and to you know say hey you know i made a mistake but that's okay i'm going to learn from this mistake and i'm going to do better next time so i think taking the mindset of I can do it alone, so I can do it as a team, and there's people around me who care about me and love me, and I have to include them and trust. You know, that's a hard thing as a veteran to trust other people um, because, you, you know, you, you just don't know what people's, you know, agendas are or what, the, you know, what, 
why do they want to help you? You know, you have to understand mm-hmm. that people want to help you and they don't have uh, ill will towards you in their mind. They really want to help you. There's thousands and thousands of veterans who are out here doing amazing things and you just have to open your heart up and trust. So you've got some books out there, Turning the Page, Overcoming Abuse uh, to Reach Life's Fulfillment. You've got Our Journey, Heart to Heart with God, Bridging the Gap for Veterans, From Soldier to Civilian, A Roadmap to Success. So where can listeners find these books and find more about you? Well, I'm in the process, uh, two steps right now. I'm in a process of publishing um, the third book, Bridging the Gap for Veterans. And so right now I'm trying to generate um, over 100 quotes from veterans. So if there's any active duty or veterans who would like an uh, electronic copy of the book, I can send that to them so they don't have to wait. Um, and if they were able to give a quote for the book, that would be wonderful. I'm really trying to spread the word. Um, when I published my first book in 2014, I self-published the book. I had a uh, intermediate publisher and I just – I took it off the market after about a year because I realized that even though I had been in U.S. Veteran Magazine, I had been in Disabled American Veteran Magazine, I had done radio interviews and TV interviews, that that wasn't the forum that I had wanted my books out there. That mm. I wanted to take it to even a larger level. So I kind of reconvened everything. So the books will be available in 2016, all three of them. Um, I'm working on finalizing a publishing deal. So if there's anyone out there who has any assistance with that in the veteran community, um, I would love that. Um, any network or platform that can help me excel the process, uh, that would be very helpful. But when the book comes out, I want to make sure that you know I have the release date. I have all the information set up. I have everything prepared so it just doesn't come out. As an author, uh, very – informational um there's different ways you can publish books in 2015 going into 2016 um but just to put a book out there for me to to sit on a shelf or or not have a big impact that's not something that is really ideal to me so when the book comes out i want it to be able to reach millions of veterans i want it to help a lot of people so that's what i'm working on at this very moment so i appreciate the time you've given me on the podcast eddie i really appreciate that i hope that every veteran out there um enjoyed the the conversation that we had today i hope it helps them in some way um you can connect with me on linkedin my website is power of one llc.com which i'm sure you'll provide to people Um, i'm very open i'm willing to email and uh, do anything i can to help any veteran and also any networks that we can tap in together as a team it takes it takes us all the way that veterans can help each other is that we stick together Awesome. awesome hey you know uh thanks so much for coming on and Please let me know when you get uh, close to uh, making that launch in 2016. I'd love to have you back on the show. Uh, we can do a, a, a promotion uh, episode because this is very valuable information, and I, I know uh, that veterans uh, everywhere will be able to uh, be able to leverage the information and knowledge that that you have in that uh, in those books. So um, I love and, and wait for you to come back on. Um, thank you so much. It's been a, it's been fun. It's been a pleasure. You can find all the show notes for this episode at changeyourpov.com forward slash episode 10. Never miss an episode. Hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. We have a lot more great content headed your way. If you want to reach out to me, you can email me at eddie at changeyourpov.com. I would love to hear from you. This is Eddie Lazar. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Change Your POV Podcast with Eddie Lazary. Check out more content by going to changeyourpov.com. And remember, your ability and willingness to change your point of view will open doors of opportunity.